Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and in this video we're going to be making some simple geometric earrings out of two types of laser cuttable rubber. In the first part, we're going to take a quick look at the materials and perform a couple of tests. Then we're going to be creating three different designs using very simple shapes. And at the end, I'm going to be sharing some tips and techniques about working with those materials, and uh, I'll show you the finished product. The idea for using this material came from admiring the work of the folks at Nervous System who make these uh, really beautiful and awesome pieces out of silicone and EPDM rubber and it was also inspired by the work of uh, Leah Bickley who uses uh, laser cut silicone for making earrings and for embossing shapes on ceramics. I think these are cool because they're soft, they are inexpensive alternatives to leather they come in a bunch of different colors and they're fairly easy to cut. Um, so let's get started. Here are the two types of rubber we are going to be experimenting with. On one side we have EPDM on a few different thicknesses. And uh, on the other side we have the silicone rubber, which is commonly available because it's used for a lot of kitchen appliances. Uh, these particular colors came from kitchen mats, um, they usually have a shiny side and they are matte on the other side. It's kind of nice that it comes in different colors. The black, blue and yellow here I got from the same supplier. And then the red one or this kind of off-red seems to be used for some industrial application. This one came from McMaster car. And this is the EPDM rubber. Also from McMaster car, it comes with some sort of powdery substance on it, probably to protect it from moisture. I got it in three different thicknesses. The thinnest one, the 164 of an inch, it's very soft, it drapes very easily, it's fairly stretchy and surprisingly feels like fabric when you bunch it up. Then the 1 32nd of an inch is the same thickness as the silicone and it's a little bit less flexible and I would describe the consistency as, uh, as an inner tube, like a flat inner tube. Um, and then the 1 16th of an inch, uh, it feels much thicker, doesn't stretch as easily, uh, so we'll see what kind of results we can get out of it. The first test I conducted with the EPDM rubber was to cut it in strips of increasing thickness of about two thousandths of an inch because I wanted to know how much I could get away with for the design. And then I pulled it to see how much deformation I got. And it seems that I can get away with about 0 0.03 inches without breaking it. And I did the same test with the silicone rubber, which felt a bit more elastic. But this is a good starting point, knowing that 0.03 inches is about the minimum I can get away with. We're going to start with a very simple design, and as we learn to do things, we can add more complexity and interest to our shapes. So, to get started, what I want to have is a reference for how big my design is going to be at the end. So I'm going to start by dragging a circle into my canvas and I want this circle to be about one and a half inches so I'm going to scale it and to do that I can grab the corner the bounding box corner and if I do these you can see that the proportions kind of change but if I hold shift the proportions stay constrained and if I hold command then it's going to expand from the center so I'm going to make it one and a half inches and I'm going to give it a name because I, I want to I wanna know its name as we go. So I'm going to double click here and I'm going to call it reference. Then I'm going to grab a rectangle. I'm going to place it right on top of that circle and I want to rotate it. So I go to the corner to get that curvy arrow and I can I can rotate as much as I want, but if I hold shift, then again it constrains to 15 degree increments. So I only want a 45 degree rotation. And then I'm gonna 
expand it or scale it a bit until it hits the outside of the of my circle. So a lot of people are very familiar with these ideas that shapes can have a stroke and a fill, but for those of you getting started, let's just talk about them real quick. So any shape can have a stroke um, attribute, which is a name for the outline, and that outline can have different colors. So if you want to change the colors, we can pull out this color selector. And that stroke or outline can also have different um, thicknesses and, and other things. So by default, Cuddle keeps these outlines very thin because some laser cutters, uh, the software for some laser cutters prefers it that way, but we can also change them. So I'm going to uncheck this hairline stroke and you can see how now we get access to the width of the stroke, which I can change by moving this number. And if I want to change the fill, I need to check this fill and then select any color that I want. So that's just that's just the, the basics of shapes. Uh, in our case, we're going to stick with a white fill and we're going to stick with a black uh, stroke. And as I showed you before, there there is a certain thickness that we want uh, our outlines to be given this material that we're using. And I found out that the smallest thickness or width that I can get away with was about 0 0.03 inches. Um, but I'm going to double that. I think that is still, this still makes it um, somewhat delicate. So we're going to go with uh, 0 0.06 for the width. So this is the actual start of our design now. So I'm going to, I'm going to have a, a square. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this uh, shape. So I can do that by going to the right and right clicking and duplicate. So that creates a second instance of that rectangle and I want to scale it. So I'm going to grab it from this corner and I'm going to scale it while holding shift so it's constrained. And because I have snapping enabled, it's going to uh, hit the center. And the other way in which I can duplicate the shape is by selecting it and um, pressing Command D. That also duplicates the rectangle. So now I have three instances of that rectangle. And the last one, I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to bring it down like so. So um, I think this is an interesting start. So in this case, for example, I actually want the the lines belonging to this rectangle to show up. So what I'm going to do is going to select that one and then I'm going to deselect the fill so then the stroke from that previous one kind of shows up there. And this is very simple. Sometimes I like to challenge myself to make uh, designs that have very, very, a very small number of uh, shapes. And uh, let's go with this uh, simple square. So the next thing I want to do is I want to have a little hole for where the finding is going to be. And so for that, I'm going to grab a circle and I'm going to place it here in the corner of that, um, of that rectangle. And I've decided that, that, that the scale of that circle is going to be very small. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to select my scale here and I'll make it 0.1. That seems very small, but let's zoom in and then move it down to see. And I also want the stroke to be the same as the previous shapes. So I can go down here, deselect hairline, and then the width is going to be again 0 0.06. And I also want a fill and I want it white. So there, as you can see, that creates uh, a little hole where I can put my finding. So let's go back to this view. So at this point, if this reference circle is getting on the way, I can actually select it and then check this eye icon to um, make it disappear. And so we're almost there. The next thing to figure out is the following. So if I were to send this shape to the laser cutter as it is, then the path that it would follow is the path of all the lines that are the center of my stroke. So that would make a bunch of uh, disjointed shapes. What I want to do is to have a shape that is just what I see, like the black area, 
without the white areas. And so there is a convenient way of doing that. And so I'm going to select all the shapes I created. I'm, I'm going to go to modify and use this modifier called boolean flatten. So as you can see now, I, we see this green outline. And in order to see it better, I'm going to check this stroke result. So the green outline is showing me where the laser cutter is going to be cutting all my shapes. So this is this is what I want. Use the use the combined uh, stroke sizes as we designed it. Um, one last element that we can add is the following. Sometimes with this rubber, I've noticed that the corners can be places where it could tear. So rounding the corners is a really convenient way of like making it stronger. So with that, I can select the shape, go to modify and apply this round corners modifier. This is going to round everything and it's going to entirely change the character of the shape, which is, which is kind of interesting on its own. Um, but I want to keep the character I had before. You can, of course, play with these if you would like. So I'm going to reduce the radius of the, of the corner uh, rounding. So I think something like 0 0.04 gives me a little round, um, a little roundness that keeps it stronger, but it, it still keeps this kind of uh, heavily geometric uh, feel to the shape. Um, so that's for the first shape. Now let's try something similar with a different uh, style. So let's make another very simple design that uses the same concepts, but uh, it's going to serve as a sort of review. So I'm going to start by creating a new component and I'm going to keep this one even simpler so I'm going to just drag myself a circle that is one inch by one inch. And I'm going to deselect the hairline. And I'm going to keep the thickness, uh, the stroke thickness as a default, uh, 0 0.1. Then I'm going to duplicate this one with Command D. And I'm going to make it about half the size. And I'm going to move it to the top going for this kind of sun and moon kind of look. And then I want to create a little hole for the hook or finding. And so I'm going to use another circle. And I want this one to be 0 0.1. So I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.1. And the thickness of the stroke is going to be 0 0.06, which is the one we used for the previous design. And it's, and I want the center to be white or the fill to be white. Sorry, it's white. And then that's just gonna be the little loop that hooks it up. So I'm gonna bring it close to that. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Select all the shapes, apply the Boolean flatten modifier, which is, creates a single unified shape that we can cut. I'm gonna show you the outline like that and then the last thing is i want to add that round corners modifier is a circle so there are not that many corners to round but you'll see that it does round the it does round these edges really nicely and then it kind of kills those little corners so that's our second design um, using the same concepts and for the final one let's create something a bit more intricate uh, but hopefully a lot of the concepts are going to be uh, very clear to you. So I'm going to start again by creating a new component. Um, this time I also want a reference circle, so I'm going to grab a circle, make it one and a half inches. Um, I'm going to rename it. Rename it. And uh, this time I want... I want to use polygons. So I'm going to grab a polygon from the right hand side. I think seven sided polygons don't get a lot of love because they're a little weird, but we're going to, we're going to try and make something with them. So I'm going to make it seven sides. Then I'm going to make it a little bit smaller again, holding shift and command. And um, I'm going to use the same uh, thickness for the stroke that I used on the first design, which is uh, 0 0.06 inches. And 
in this case, I want to I wanna rotate the same shape around. So I'm going to use a modifier called rotational repeat. So I get like a, I immediately get, I get an interesting shape. So because I want it to fit inside my circle, I can still go and edit the original shape and move it around to see what I get. Um, I can I can also change its size to kind of find something something interesting. And if I wanted, I could also be changing its uh, the width of this of the stroke, but I'm going to keep it at 0 0.6. And of course, we can uh, also change the number of repetitions. So that those all will give us different characters to the shape. So I'm going to do a 7 again, for weirdness sake. Um, yeah, I wanted to match those uh, one and a half inches, so I'm going to... Sometimes when you are making these changes, you can see how it is snapping, so you can uh, turn snapping off to like do um, small tweaks as you as you see fit. So in this case, this is what I want. That looks interesting, it looks like a kind of geometric floral shape. And then I'm going to add the usual uh, hole uh, for the hook or finding. Some some designs might not need it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for it. So I'm going to add my circle, I'll put it near the top. Um, that was uh, 0 0.1, and again the 0 0.06 for the thickness of the stroke, and I want a white fill so the the center holds face intact. And I'm going to place it near the edge. And I'm going to hide my reference circle. And once again, if I were to send this to the laser cutter, then all these things would get caught and I would end up with a bunch of pieces. So I'm going to use the Boolean flatten modifier to get my, my single shape. Um, even after I have applied this uh, modifier, there are some things I can change. So for example, I see there are these little corners that are, I don't know if I really want them. So I can, um, I can go double click to go into this isolation mode where I can still edit the shape. And so I'm going to move it up a tiny bit so I get rid of those corners. And uh, I think this is the shape I want. And as usual, I'm going to add that uh, round corners, which again is going gonna, is gonna to create a sort of alien flower shape if I let it, which is interesting on its own, if you would like it. But I'm going to make it a bit more subtle. So I think there's a lot to explore with this uh, circular um, rotational repeat. Uh, you can you can try uh, all sorts of different shapes. Uh, you can create your own shapes. I'm gonna go cut a few of these designs so I can show you the results on the different materials. And there will be a link in the description uh, to the same project so you can make some changes and uh, cut your own versions. Um, also, I'm gonna leave a list of the materials that I used and some of the settings. And um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching. So let's take a look at the results. Uh, I have the silicones. They're all the same thickness and just different colors. See, so it has the matte side and the and a more shiny side. It's pretty stretchy. I think that all the different colors, I got like very similar results. This is the red that's shiny on both sides. This is the 164th. Um, it feels it feels very delicate, but I like that it comes back to its previous shape. I can stretch it a fair amount. Then this is the one thirty-second of an inch. I think this is probably my favorite 
thickness. Still strong. And this is the 116. Um, I didn't get such good results cutting this one, I think. My laser cutter managed to burn some of those edges. And as you can see, it's fairly thick. St it still feels pretty strong. And here I have the other two designs. That's the one that has the thicker line, and then this is the square. Now some tips. If you don't cut all the way through the material with EPDM rubber, it's safe to just tear the little pieces apart. It seems to leave a clean cut. Also, you can clean the black suit that comes out of cutting this material with just some soap and warm water. On silicone, the residue is this white powder and the burn marks and the powder can be cleaned with soap and warm water as well. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the burn marks washed away so easily. Another thing I noticed is that some silicones will warp while being cut, which can damage the design. So the solution I came up with was to use masking tape on both sides of the material which makes it stiff enough that it can be cut without warping. The bonus you get with the masking tape is that there is less cleanup involved at the end. You can buy these hooks pre-made and to install them you only need to open the eye a little bit, then slide in your design and Gently close it back up. And for a final touch, I made this simple chipboard display, which is going to be included in the project file. Thank you for watching.